let's try to log in inside the application with some password login cool you can see the data back of abhishek at gmail.com i can remove the cache and if i hot restart everything i should be able to see the login view hey everyone welcome to a new video in this video let's try to explore what is shared preferences and how we can use shared preferences as a local static database for our flutter application now for this tutorial i have created two views which is a home view and a login view now what will happen here once the user will be entering the information about him and once you try to log in the information will be saved and after pressing on splash let's consider the user uh, opens the application again he should be able to see the home page instead of the login page with the help of shared preferences right so before moving forward the first thing you have to do is go to pub.dev and search for shared pref you can find the first result here which is shared preferences itself and here you can see there are basic examples over how to use it that is writing some data reading some data and also removing that particular data right so what you can do is copy the following package name with the version number go into pub spec.yaml file and simply paste that package here or what you can also do is open your terminal and here you can simply write flutter pub add and you can just enter the name of the package you just have to remove the version number and a colon and simply place here enter after pressing enter the following package will be installed in your pub spec.yaml file with the latest version so you don't have to copy and paste the name of the package and put it back again and again now this will this might take a couple of seconds let's wait for it so now the first thing that i should be doing is creating a new service the service will be including all the functions features variables and everything that will be requiring in order to use a particular package now our package name is called shared preference so i'll be simply creating a new service called shared pref service right now this service will be containing multiple functions variables and all data related for the usage of shared preferences so here i'll be creating a new feature and we need to write create that is right read and delete the data whatever data will be saving in our database will be a cache that is small chunk of data so to do that i'll be writing a new function of write cache and make it async now here i have to instantiate a new variable of shared preference so i'll simply write and call shared preferences from the package it will be auto imported and here i can simply say it to be a pref is equal to shared preference dot get instance we have to take the instance of the value i can make it await so we'll be getting the all data of the instance into the pref value so here if i simply go down and say pref dot you can see we'll be getting a bunch of functions from the package itself so here what i'll do i'll simply go down and here you can see you'll be getting a function that is bunch of functions of set and also bunch of function of get now set will be used to store data and and get will be used to get the data back so here what i can do i can set some value that is i can write some cache so i can simply set a new string because our data that is email and password will be a string so it's logically dependent for us to set them as a string now here we'll be requiring bunch of things that is a key and a value so here i can write a value of email and a value which will be dynamic so i can simply add a required parameter of a string of value just like this and this will be saved as a value for now we have to also make the string that is the key to be dynamic so i can also say required string a key which will be dynamic and instead of email i can save it as a key now this thing will be a future and it will be returning us if you hover over it a boolean that is if the data is saved or not so here i can simply say bull that is boolean is saved is equal to await preference dot set string and now i can simply print if the value is saved and here i can say is saved dot to string to get it working now here what we can do we can go down in the shared preference view which require which represent the login view and here i can instantiate the service of shared preference service of shared preference service is equal to an instance of shared preference service now here if you see on trapping on login i am doing nothing but simply uh, pushing the entire view to a new view so instead of doing this what i have to do i have to call the share preference service and press dot here you can see we'll be getting a function of write cache now here i can uh, add a key of email and a value of email controller dot text just like this and 
this will be saving the data that is we will be getting is saved to be string so now if i go to debug console and if i write some value let's say abhishek at gmail.com and some password if i say login you can see we'll be getting an error here of no implementation found that's because whenever you add a package like shared preferences which plays with our native mobile system we have to close the entire application and start the application again so what i can do i can simply press function and f5 that will be loading the application again now until this application is loading i would like to show you one of the resources that i found to learn about technology about dsa about development which is gig for gigs now most of the people have already heard about this platform i have personally used this in my learning days and the good thing is this month that is for april this platform have bought a new challenge of 390 challenge now what is it if you go into any course let's say dsa for full stack development with react node java or anything you want you can avail 90 percent refund yeah that's true you can avail 90 percent refund or a particular course price no matter if it is of 20 000 or 1000 or 5000 if you try to complete that course in 90 days which a percent of 90 percent you'll be getting a complete refund of 90 percent that is if the, if the course is of 100 rupees you will be getting 90 rupees back that's fun right so now if you want to learn about anything related to technology computer dsa node development anything you can simply go to geeksforgeeks.org and you can avail the following feature that is a feature they have availed for all the developers that is get 90 percent of your money back now i'll be posting a link of the following course in the description you can choose any course you want you can purchase the course you can try to complete that course within 90 days with a 90 percent and get your money back this will help you in excelling your skills and also saving 90 percent of your money so what are you waiting for just go in the following website of geeksforgeeks.org in the description box which is available and simply choose a course that you want to learn and start learning now, once we have done that, we can go back and you can see our login function is back in action. So now if I open debug console back and if I simply say some email at gmail.com, something like this and press login, you can see we'll be getting a value of true. That is the data, that is the cache of email is saved in our small database as a cache. So now if I go back, what I can do, I can try to read the value. So to do that, I can copy the function and paste it here and i can say read the cache so here to read the cache we can type here once back and you can say we'll be getting a value of get string so now i will try to retrieve the data back now here i'll be requiring a value which will be a string so here i can simply say the value now also here we'll be requiring a key value so here we'll be requiring a key and to paste that we can use the value of key here so copy and paste that here and I think we will be, uh, yeah, okay. Just uh, let me get it back. And this will be a nullable string. So let's make it nullable. And here the value will be key, All right? I can remove the await because it won't require the await parameter. And here I can simply say, if value is not equal to null, you can simply try to debug the value, All right? So I can simply say value dot to string, easy. So now let's try to read some cache. So in order to read the cache, I can go to home view and I can try to read the cache here. So I can simply uh, do one thing. I can copy the class that is shared preference service, paste it here and again, I can try to read the value, All right? So here I can simply say shared preference dot read cache and the key should be unique. And if you remember, we have the key of email so we can take it back. So if I tap on here, you can see we'll be requesting the value of abhishek at gmail.com. So let's try to save a different value of abhishek2 at gmail.com and try to read it. Yeah, we are getting the value back. That is abhishek2 at gmail.com. Now we can also delete the following cache. So to do that, what I'll do, I'll change this uh, widget into a column. So I'll make it a column and I can say remove cache. And we can try to remove all the cache. So let's try to do that. So here I'll be creating a new function uh, that is to remove the cache. So I'll say remove cache. And here if I tap on back, you can see we'll be getting a value. That is we'll be getting a function of clear. So I can say clear and it will be a boolean of is cleared 
I guess if I am not wrong it will be uh, in await state so right so I can simply say uh, if if cleared is not equal to null or it will be not nullable yeah so I can say clear to string right so to use that we will be using the same function again that is remove cache we won't be requiring a value here for now and I can delete this as well oh we have used this in a different function that is a different view so let's redo it and go back in home view and I can simply say remove cache right so let's try to remove the cache perfect so now if I reload tender application again the cache will be removed right we haven't seen the example because the value was gone so now let's try to see the everything that we have learned so far in action right so the first thing you can observe if i retrieve that is if i restart the entire application we are seeing a small uh, splash view so here what we can do we can read the value if there's an email and we can say if there's a email value push the user back to the home view if not push the user to the login view easy so now the first thing I'll do is make this function to be asynchronous and here I'll try to read the value that is with the function of read cache. So here the first thing is copy the class name paste it here and here I'll try to read the value. So value is equal to shared preference dot read cache and the key will be nothing but email for now. So it will be a, a wait statement because we have to wait for it. So let's make it a wait easy. Now if I hover over it, the value will be giving us a string. So to give it back, what we have to do? We have to make this future to be a string format and I can simply return the value. So I can say return the value. If not, if the value is not uh, returnable, simply return a null. Easy. So I can make it a nullable string. So here, if we have a value, we'll be getting the value. If not, we'll be getting a null value. Easy. So let's go here and make it a value that is a nullable string. So now if we have a value, we'll be getting the data of the value. If not, we'll be getting a null value. So now what I can do, I can say here, I can use a if else for statement for now. I can say if value is not equal to null, you can push the user to the home view. If not, you can push the user to the shared preference view, that is the login view. Right. So let, let's try to see that thing in action. If I how to start everything. Okay, so now if I tap on back, I'm getting a null value. And the reason is because if I go back to my entire function of service, I'm not reading the value. So I have to return the value. And if I tap on it, I'll be getting the value back. So let's try to restart everything and see everything in action back. So uh, let's try to create a new account. Oh, we have already saving the cache so I can remove the cache. And here I can simply say uh, if the cache is removed, so I can return a boolean here. So I can say return is cleared so yeah it will be a boolean yeah let's make it a boolean cool so now uh, let's go back here and i can simply say a uh, boolean is removed is equal to the value so let's make it async and let's wait for it so now i can say if uh, is removed simply uh, go back for now yeah else I can do something else for now let's keep it in action I can remove this warning for now we will solve it in a, some live project not for now so if I tap on it the cache is removed and it will be going back to the uber scratch so what I have to do uh, I can do one thing I can simply uh, copy the navigation and I can say uh, push me back to the login page because now we are coming back from the splash screen so it is getting a pu it is pushing us to the splash screen but I can hot restart, hot restart everything and if I hot restart it I'll be seeing a login page because the cache was removed right so now let's try to uh, start everything again so let's try to create a new account and I can add some password login cool if I uh, try to see the value instead of now popping the value if I tap on go back you can see I'm getting my cache if I hot restart everything we will be navigated to the home screen but not on login screen because the cache is there i can say remove cache and yeah so for removing the cache i can go to flutter share preference view instead of that view cool so now if i hot to start everything i should be able to go back to the login view let's try to login inside the application with some password login 
cool you can see the data back of abhishek at gmail.com i can remove the cache and if i hot restart everything i should be able to see the login view easy so this is how you can use shared preferences with flutter in the best way as possible i have shown the best practices to use shared preference that is create a separate service to create a different layer and use the instance of the class in shared preferences instead of creating the service again and again now i hope you have loved this tutorial and if you have loved this please hit that like button also check out the course format of 90 percent refund challenge of gigs for gigs and please use the following link in the description box and let me know how did you feel after using that courses and also how did you feel about this tutorial see you soon